Very good. So it's good to be here tonight to share with the church. And it is very good as well, too, to be asked to share. I want to give um, thanks tonight, too, to yeah. Reverend Jackman and the whole team that we have here. Um, Reverend Jackman, we have um, Pastor John Carrington. We have Dr. Alicia Allen and Dr. Rene as well. Um, Boyce and myself, we are the ones that will be presented for this month. And tonight I have been given the task basically yeah. of looking at the biblical perspective of homosexuality and we are going to look at the bible to see what it is that we can glean from the text and yes, basically what um, god is saying to us through the word so before we get into that do you want to what happened with grace and start michael? with a word of prayer i want to ask everyone to please mute your um, devices um so that we don't have a lot of confusion because right now we have 104 persons and it may be difficult for us to be looking to see who has their um their mic on and that kind of stuff so please uh, manage your uh, device as well so we give god thanks tonight for this opportunity to share let us pray and get, get right into our studies tonight tonight father we bless you and give you honor oh father for your goodness Father, we are glad, oh God, that every day we can see your hand, every day we can see um, you are doing something in our lives. Even you, Sarita says that every day the Lord himself is near me. So we are glad that you are always with your people and you have promised that you will never leave, nor you will never forsake. Tonight we have come, oh Father, to let into your word, oh Father, we, we cover again your anointing and your spirit, the one who gives understanding and revelation. We pray that he will come even now and he would guide us into our truth concerning this particular subject and topic and we pray at the end of it oh god that we will be wiser for it and that we have a better understanding we even pray that yokes oh father and strongholds will be broken as we share we pray that your spirit of conviction as well will come upon us if we are living this way and father i pray that we will also be enlightened and be strengthened oh god in jesus name so we give you thanks for this session in jesus name and we say amen amen all right, so again, we give God thanks for the opportunity to be sharing like this. And we are going to be looking tonight at the biblical perspective of um, homosexuality. So there's a lot that we can say. And I'm glad too for what we would have dealt with on Sunday, I'm gone with Pastor Jackman. At Chapman Street, and we would have looked at the whole agenda, and we are looking at this whole agenda because this agenda is a very serious one. And even though it's not new, um, I think it's something that has gone now to a level, you know, what I mean, that is like, whoa, it's gone to a level that is, well, it is really, really, really deep. So I think sometimes as a church, we need to come to the word so that we will understand exactly what God has to say to us because as Jew says that we have to contend for the faith for the fight for the faith we are supposed to be given a reason you know what I mean for persons who are practicing certain things and also to defend the truth because the Bible declares that the church is the pillar and the mainstay of the truth so when it comes to truth the church um, is supposed to be the, the ones that have the truth about God and basically how to live right so if we are ignorant about these things, then we are in a sad um, situation because we have to be able to, to share uh, with people basically um, what God's word is basically saying um, and not necessarily what the culture is basically um, promoting. So we don't want to be um, being conformed to this world. We want that we basically are transforming this world basically by the word of God and by the things that we have in, in, in the word. So again, we are glad that we can be sharing in this session. So a definition of homosexuality, um, basically from Clinton and Hawkins, from the quick reference guide to biblical counseling and personal and emotional issues, they, they define homosexuality um, 
it refers to an orientation and a, and a behavior. The homosexual orientation is a condition in which a person is sexually attracted to members of the same sex. So basically we know that it is basically about same sex uh, relationships. And we have to look to see what the word of God is saying to us about these relationships. Now, creation it itself um, gives us God's design, basically. Um, basically, God's intention, because I think if you're going to look at homosexuality, we have to go back to the beginning. Now, my mother will always say to me um, that I should go to the, hang the head of the spring to get clean water. <laughs> you know, that's my mother's way of putting it over, that I should go to the head of the spring. So if you want to know anything, um, it's best to go to the head of the spring, meaning that if you go anywhere further down in the spring, you can get water that is contaminated. So I guess God's intention and God's deliberate plan for man is spelled out basically from the very beginning when he created man in his image. So basically, God basically um, shows us um, uh, his design basically for heterosexual um, unions and not um, homosexual unions. God basically is showing us from creation what his intention is. It is basically heterosexual and not um, homosexual union. So in Genesis chapter one and verse 27 to 28, it says here, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. Then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So we see that God created man in his image and God is the one that created male and female, which is interesting. And now nowadays we have people that are saying that they have um, 11 genders, <laughs> you know what I mean? And all they can see is two. And the Bible declares that God made they them male and female, he created them, and God blessed them, and God told them to be fruitful and to multiply and to fill the earth and subdue it. Now, we understand, first of all, that God is the one that created male and female, and we also understand, too, that God commissioned them or God told them to be fruitful and to multiply. So it means then that the male and the female have the capacity to bring forth children and, and to procreate. Uh, two females can't do that, and two males can't do that for sure. So we see then from the beginning, then God, when God designed a uh, created man, it was his design that man and woman or, or male and female would go together and basically not um, male and male and female and female. Um, it also goes on to say in chapter two of Genesis, so Adam gives names to all cattle, to the birds of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. And God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord had taken out from man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Again, creation shows that God's design had a sexual um, basically um, unions are not homosexual unions because again, God made a male and female. I know God could have designed or created Adam and Eve at the same time. God created Adam first and then God took a rip out of Adam. And as we normally say, that is where the woman is supposed to be next to the side of a man. And not again, not two men or not two women. But the thing that I love about this is that God caused a deep sea to come upon Adam and the Bible declares that God took the rip out of him, made a woman, and brought her to the man. So God is the one who designed this from the very beginning. And the woman that God created was designed for the man. And God is the one that brought the, 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 the woman to the man. So again, God is, 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 is saying heterosexual unions is the one that I ordained. That is the example. That is the created or, or the creation model basically that God has and that is the blueprint I believe that God has for all mankind all other marriages basically 
or null and void because God is the one who created the woman, brought her to the man, and that's where the marriage between uh, or the union between um, Adam and his wife began. God is the one who orchestrated that and did that. So creation shows this. Um, also from 23 to 25 of second, uh, sorry, of Genesis chapter 2, it says, and Adam said, this is no bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called a woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife. And they shall become one flesh. And they were naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. The Bible declares man and his wife. This is, again, um, creation is what God is saying, true creation. This is my model, basically, um, for life, that a man and a woman go together, and the male and the female go together. So again, homosexual design is a, is a, is a, is a construct of man, is a devilish construct, because again, we cannot see it um, there in Genesis. We cannot see God at any point on time um, actually saying or sanctioning, basically, this, um, this whole union between the same sex. So it is God who created man, and it is God who brought the woman to um, the man. And then that is where the marriage started, because again, we can see here, the word wife is being used here in Genesis chapter 2, um, of verse uh, 25. Even Jesus himself actually confirms this. When, when they were talking about divorce and marriage and that kind of stuff, um, Jesus himself said to the people back then, he says, from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. And for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. And the two shall become one flesh. So there, so there were no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let not man separate. So Jesus confirms that what happened at creation is the model for all marriages. Christ now is coming out in the New Testament and he has gone back to the very beginning and he's saying that what happened in Genesis, what happened at creation, when God created male and female, that is the model basically for all creation. As I said before, we have a lot of things that are being done by people, but that is not the biblical model. The biblical model is that God made men uh, a man for a woman, a woman for a man. And then Jesus himself now is confirming that what happened at creation is the model basically uh, for all marriages. So again, we see that biblically speaking, when it comes to homosexuality, um, God has nothing to, be, to, to, to do with that. That's a construct of the enemy. And that is what something that man has basically um, learned to do, right? So there's another one that we see here um, after that in, in Sodom, the first time you actually see this whole homosexual um, thing come into pass. Um, remember the story loud and clear with um, Abraham and remember the story as well when God came to Abraham and two angels, and the Bible declares that God said, shall I hide what I'm going to do from Abraham? So it was God there with Abraham and two angels, and the Bible declares that God spoke with Abraham there, but the two angels left and went to Sodom. You're going to pick up notes right now where the angels actually arrived now in Sodom, in Genesis chapter 19, reading from verse 1 to 5. And it reads, now the two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward, toward the ground. And he said, hear now, my lords, please turn in to your servant's house and spend the night and wash your feet. Then you may rise early and go your way. And they said, no, but we will spend the night in the open square. But he insisted strongly, so they turned into him and entered his house. Then he made them a feast and baked unleavened bread, and they ate. Now before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, both old and young, all the people from every quarter surrounded the house. And they called to Lot and said to him, 
where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out that, bring them out to us rather, that we may know them carnally. So this is the first time we're gonna see this thing be recorded in, in the Bible where, where men know of the same sex or seeking to have sex with men of the same sex. So these men, the Bible says here, both young and old, old and young, all the people from every quarter surrounded the house. So it seemed to be a, a, a practice and a custom of these people then to, to be living uh, that way where they are having same sex relations. Now, these men didn't have a clue that these men were, were, were angels. Um, but they just saw these men and they said to bring them out that they would know them currently. Now, the word know them means um, intercourse, and they sexual intercourse we're talking about. So these men wanted to know these men sexually. And um, even though this is the, like, the first reference to any, anything to do with um, homosexuality, we have to see that this is not consensual. We have to see that this will be, will be seen more as rape because when you think about um, these men surrounding the house, and asking a lot to bring these men out that they may know them currently. This is, this is not, this is not um, sexual relationship between two consented adults. This is basically men of the city or the town that want to rape these two, these two angels, even though they didn't know that they were angels. So this is a, a, a serious one because basically they wanted to rape these men. And, and, and what had me too about this whole story or this whole text is that Lot wanted to bring his daughters out for these men instead of allowing these men to do these things with these men. So in my estimation, Lot was saying that this is so degrading and so vile that I would rather give my daughters to you than to allow you to do these things to these men. So um, it, it really shows to the level of, 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 of you know what I mean, how, how, how the previous people were, right? So this is the first instance, and then even the book of Jude, chapter seven, um, sorry, verse seven rather, um, Jude is saying that as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in a similar manner to these having given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh, look at that, strange flesh, are set forth as an example, suffering vengeance of eternal fire. As we said, God designed it from the beginning. God placed man and woman together. That is the creation, the model of creation. And Judah saying here that these men of Sodom and Gomorrah have gone after strange flesh. Strange flesh meaning is not the, the, the normal way. It is, it is unnatural. Um, God never designed um, men to live with men or women to live with women. So if you have men with men, and you have women with women, that is what you call strange flesh. So the, the fact that old and young and also men from every quarter came it, it, it is a practice that was going on before those angels got there. It's nothing new. There's something that these men actually were practicing before those angels actually got to Lot's house. And now Jude is saying oh, as well that these people... Um, have given themselves to sexual immorality and have gone after strange flesh, which is abomination basically as well too. So we see so far down that the model that we have from, 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 from Genesis, um, where God has made man or woman for the man is being challenged here because these men now are living as they please. And it is not a, 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 a good thing at all to, 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 to witness. Now, Homosexual relationships basically are forbidden in the word. Um, if you look at Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 13, it says, if a man lies with a male as he lies with a woman, both of them have, co have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. Now, we look just now and we see the case with the, the angels coming to Lot's house. We are seeing, as I said, there's now a situation more of rape. So this is, this is these men, um, not necessarily raping women, but these want to rape, have sex relationships basically with, with, with men. And it was unlawful. It was not two consenting adults. So 
these men want to rape these two men, but in this case here, it says here, if a man lies with a male as he lies with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. Now, this is where you have the, the consensual thing. This is where you now you have two persons who decide that we are going to lie together. And it's not a case where they are forcing each other on each other or whatever, but it's something that's consensual. So the Bible declares, if a man lies with a male as he lies with, uh, with, with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. An abomination is a very strong word uh, because it speaks of something that is totally detestable before God. Um, and so it, it, is, it is like totally, I mean, it is something that God this is totally against, right? Um, so first thing is it is forbidden, right? And then the Bible also declares here that they shall be put to death. So the penalty is basically for persons who are committing this, this act basically was death. And the Bible declares that the blood shall be upon their shoulders. So we see then that the Bible forbids um, same-sex unions. Um, and then we come now to this one that I missed, sorry, right? It says here, you shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. The New Living Translation puts it this way. It says, do not practice homosexuality. Having sex with another man as with a woman, it is a detestable sin, right? And we, the word lay means to have intercourse. Um, it means to have um, sexual intercourse or to lay with someone. So again, the, it is forbidden. Um, and it says you shall not do it. So if people are practicing it, it, it means then that they are going against the, 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 the basic um, law of God and then the whole creation principle because the creative principle basically is that God made the woman for the man and not man with man or woman for a woman. Now we come now to this case here in Romans. Romans um, chapter one uh, from verse 26 to 27. It says here, for this reason, um, God gave them up to vile passions, for even their women exchanged a natural use for what is against nature. And likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of a woman, burn in their lusts for one another, men working with men, committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error, which was due. So we have a case here now where homosexuality is considered unnatural. Because the word of God says for women, even exchange in natural use for what is against nature. We got to stop here for a bit and look at this. It says that God gave them up to, to vile passions. As a matter of fact, I want to start here for a bit and I want to share from the actual word itself. So we got to pick up from verse, read from verse 18. It says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness because what may be known of God is manifest in them for God has shown it to them. Um, so, 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 so far we are saying that um, there are persons who know the truth and who suppress it, who hold it down, right? Because what is known of God is manifest in them. And it says here um, in verse 20, for since the creation of the world, his individual attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they do not glorify God or glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they become fools, and change the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and forfeited animals and creeping things. Now, this whole context is saying to us basically that God has revealed himself to people and it's not a case where they don't know who God is because according to this text, it says that although they knew God in verse 21, they did not glorify him as God or were they thankful. And, and then it says that, they, that, that, that they, be, they became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened. So whenever we come to a place where we know God or people know God, and then they, they, then they refuse to live according 
to God's ways or God's principles, or if they don't know God, is where you're going to have some trouble. Verse, 20, verse 24 says something. It says, therefore, God gave them up. And when you hear this whole thing about God giving up people, that's a bad place to be because when you are giving up to something, it means that God basically has, is saying, all right, I have warned you over and over about this particular thing. And since you don't want to hear what I'm saying to you, I'm going to give you up basically to what you want to do. And my personal view is that the worst thing that God can do for any human being is to allow that human being to do what he feels like doing. Leave that human being to himself because when a human being is left to him or herself, that human being is going to self-destruct. So if you don't want to hear God, then God is going to leave you up or give you up then to whatever it is that you want to be in. So verse 24 says, therefore God gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves who exchange the truth of God for the light and worship and serve the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. And for this reason, again, it says that God gave them up. You see God, you see this, this whole thing coming back, this phrase coming back all the time. God gave them up in verse 24. And now verse 26 is saying, for this reason, God gave them up to vile passions. For even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. The natural use basically is that a woman is supposed to have sex with a man and not a woman. And then Paul says, um, they exchange the natural use for what is against nature. So we, we, we want to say too that homosexual relationships are not normal or, or natural. The natural thing basically is what we see in Genesis. That's what Paul says here. Um, he says the natural use, they exchange the natural use for what is against nature. And nature is, is creation. So when God created man, God created a woman to go with the man. Nowhere in creation do we see God putting a woman with a woman or a man with a man. So that's what the word of God is saying here, that they exchange the natural use for what is against nature, because that's not the model that God set. And then verse 27 says, likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burn in their lusts for one another, men with men, committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error, which was due. So again, I'm saying that the worst thing that can happen to any person is for God to just allow you to do what you want to do. Uh, basically, in verse 28, it says, and even as they did not like to retain God and their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind, or the King James says a reprobate mind. And when you have a reprobate mind, you have a mind now that, that basically, because you have rejected truth, you cannot discern good and evil. So now you're going to call something that is totally wrong, right. You're going to live a lifestyle, even though everybody knows that it is foreign and it's not right. You are saying to yourself, it is right because you do not want to retain God in your own knowledge or keep God in your own knowledge. So basically what God is doing, God is saying exactly how you want to live. I'm going to let you live. And that is the worst place for any person to be. When God takes his hand off, and allow us to live the way how we feel like. What happens is that we destroy ourselves because we cannot see this in creation. We cannot see um, this model. Anytime you see men and women, men and men, and women and women, that is against nature, against God, and that's a devil construct. That's basically what we came up with because it is nowhere found in, in creation. God did not design that. And all through the Old Testament, we also see God um, basically saying no, that if you lie with a man as you lie with a woman, you have committed an abomination. So again, the, the New Testament is basically echoing what is being said in the, in the Old Testament, because again, arguing from the whole thing of creation, and Paul is even saying that it's against nature as well. So we're saying now that this whole thing about, um, this whole thing about um, homosexuality basically is not natural. It's an unnatural way of living, right? And we have to watch that. I know we have um, this one here in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 9 um, to 10. 
Now, the lifestyle of a homosexual basically will disqualify the homosexual for entering God's kingdom. Um, and we have to understand that for sure. And the Bible declares here, do we not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Um, it says, do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor revilers, rather, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. So practicing the homosexual lifestyle will disqualify us from entering God's kingdom. And we don't want that to be to be to be um, the case. We want that basically that the work that Christ would have done on the cross that we enter into that work and be saved from the, the wrath that's to come. And Christ came, the Bible declares, to save his people from their sins. So as we're looking here now, we can see now that Paul is saying now, among other uh, homosexuals, among others, will not um, inherit the kingdom of God. Now, it is strange or it is interesting how he says here, homosexuals, nor sodomites, and we have to see uh, what this really means. Now, we have... We have the New King James saying um, homosexuals nor sodomites. And we also have the, 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 the King James version saying um, nor effeminate nor abusers of themselves with uh, mankind. So we have two Greek words um, that, that these two words are translated from. And the word homosexuals basically is, is, is malakos or, or the whole one, the, the, this one that we call effeminate. So the homosexuals and the whole thing about um, effeminates, that is the word malakos, right? And that word malakos basically speaks about um, the, the, the effeminate um, um, homosexual. is a male who was the passive partner in a homosexual relationship often of more feminine looking men and young boys. So this word Malakos basically, um, basically means that when it comes to the homosexual relationship, what happens is that somebody takes the role of a woman because we understand that as a man, a man was not designed to, to receive. A man was designed to give. A woman was designed to receive. So when you have homosexual relationships, for some reason, somebody takes the, the form of a woman and the other person takes the form of a male. So the world, the world Malkos basically um, means the one that is effeminate, the one that, that, that takes the passive role, right? And then the other word here now, we, we, that, that, that speaks about the male, the male, um, the male person uh, who commits sodomy uh, with another male. Uh, sometimes uh, basically of the active participant. So we're talking about Two persons here. So when Paul says homosexual, non sodomites, the homosexual refers to the, the person that is more the feminine person, and the sodomite speaks to the person of the, the, the one that is doing the actual sodomy, basically. And then the, the King James Version talks about effeminate, that is the, 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 the feminine one, and it also says not abusers of themselves with mankind, right? So these two Greek words basically. Um, are the words that Paul used to translate these two. And it is interesting how Paul uses these two words because he's basically saying that in the homosexual relationship, you have one that goes the feminine way and the other one basically who takes on the man shape, which is interesting. So, wow. Those two words, right? So we have to look and see basically that Paul goes to lengths to describe the persons who will not enter the kingdom of God or enter heaven. And he uses homosexuals and sodomites. And he is saying that the homosexual one is the one that has the feminine tendencies um, that shows that. And then he is showing, he's saying that the sodomites basically is the male now the one that takes the form now uh, of the man and who does the actual actions, if we, if we put it that way, right? So then the same word here is used here now too in, in 
Timothy as well. Um, chapter one and verse eight to 10. It says here basically, um, but we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous person, but for the lawless and the insubordinate, unholy and the profane, for murderers and for fa fathers of murderers and mothers. Uh, sorry, we don't want again, for, mur for murders of fathers rather, uh, murders of mothers, and for manslayers and for fornicators and for sodomites and for kidnappers and so on. So Paul is saying here again that the same word that is used there in the text now for sodomites, um, for the male, the male person, the male, the male homosexual, it is basically used here as well in First Timothy chapter eight and, and verse ten. So it is an interesting thing, and as I said. We, we, we have to look at this and, and, and see something that is very important now. This is one of the things that I cannot afford to, to, to overlook, right? The biblical um, perspective about homosexuality basically is that the homosexual can change or that homosexuals can change, right? The biblical perspective about homosexuality is that the homosexual the homosexual can change. Now, even though the Bible says here in the same text that homosexuals nor sodomites will not inherit the kingdom of God, right? Even though that is said, Paul is saying here that, but such were some of you, right? Which is, which is, which is very, very, very good. Paul says, and such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. So we're seeing now that homosexuals can change. There are persons who are saying that once you are a homosexual, the idea is that you will never change and that you were born that way and you cannot change. But according to the text here, Paul is saying that some of the people in Corinth would have been homosexuals and sodomites, would have been covetous and drunkards and extortioners. But he's saying and such were some of you, but you were washed. So then we can see then the biblical model is that homosexuals can change. And even though God is against um, the lifestyle of the homosexual, God can change the homosexual and make that person into a new creature. And that is good news. So when we think about this whole biblical perspective about homosexuality, we must understand that a homosexual can change. And that is tremendous in my estimation, right? Um, so basically, I'm going to stop there um, for now because in norm base, basically we have a lot of we have a lot of questions to 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 be answered or any comments and stuff. But I want us to understand first of all that the biblical model that we see is that God created males and females, and God brought the woman to the male, and that's where marriage started. And God is against all other unions that is not like that. And we have gone through the different uh, passages to prove this. Uh, and we have ended on the point where God is saying here that through Paul, that homosexuals can change. And we must understand that if anybody is struggling with feelings or is homosexual, that there is hope for them and they don't have to buy into the lie that they cannot. Um, we change. So right now I open the, the floor um, to, to questions and we have um, Pastor, Pastor Carrington who's here, he can answer as well. Pastor Edwin Jackman, he's also here. Um, Pastor Alicia and also Sister Renee as well. Uh, boys, she will be able, we'll be all able to answer the questions that are posed tonight. So I saw your hand, um, Lisa. Please, good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Um, I think you started to, to answer my question. I put it there in the chat, you know, the memory. Um, mm -hmm. When you spoke about persons practicing not right. entering the kingdom, then my mind went to situations where persons may have, um, you know, feelings or inclinations and right. so on. Right. And they may not be practicing. Right. I guess like persons who are heterosexual, 
who may have feelings of lust in a particular area but may not be practicing. Right. So then just what are your thoughts there? Right. Yeah, for, for sure, for sure. We live in a fallen world. And, and David declares that his mother and father conceive him in sin. And we also know the word about that we are born in sin and we are shaken in iniquity. Now, the Bible declares that in Adam all day, all, all, all day. So um, we receive that sin nature from Adam. So in Adam all day, it is in Christ that we will all be made alive. So the tendencies towards homosexuality will be there for sure. It will be there and it's there in the church because we all came out of the world. And because we were born in sin, there would be persons who would have tendencies that way. There are persons who will have feelings. And, that's, and I, think, I think that is a, a, a given. And even as Christians, as you said just now, we also have our own struggles as well. We might be practicing it, but we may have our struggles. So I believe that a Christian um, can have struggles. And that's different to a, to a Christian struggle, um, um, practicing. Now, the Bible declares that um, when we are tempted, right? Temptation is not sin. And even though I may be tempted or I may have struggles basically or whatever in my mind or whatever about something, that does not make it sin because if that, if that makes it sin, it means that Christ will also be a sinner. The Bible declares that Christ was tempted in all points, um, just as we are yet before sin. So temptation and struggles like these, um, it doesn't mean that we are dirty or that we are sinful. So Christians will have struggles with homosexuality and other things. And I think that's a normal, basic thing. But the practicing no is another thing that we have to look at. And if you're practicing sin, that is, a, that is, that is another, another thing because basically I think that a Christian should not be practicing sin, right? A, a, a Christian can sin or a Christian will sin. But when you hear practice, it means that you are living in a condition or in a state. And if that is the case, it means then that we are being hypocritical because a Christian cannot be uh, practicing a gay lifestyle and still be a Christian. I can understand a Christian having tendencies or having struggles with it or even slip once in a while, but get back up and, 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 and strive towards righteousness. But to, but, but to be in it, practicing it, like how we saw on Sunday where you have two pastors in a church married, that is abomination. And, and they, they, they are practicing sin. And if you are practicing sin, uh, it means that the Holy Spirit basically has come to a place where the conviction that the, the convicting that, that that we should feel, we're no longer feeling that, right? And that's a bad place to be. So the Bible declares that homosexuals and sodomites were not in the kingdom of God. So if, even if a pastor of a church or whoever is living with an, another another man or another a woman living with another woman, and they are pastors or wherever, they, they are practicing sin and they will not inherit the kingdom of God. Something is totally wrong there because the Holy Spirit is supposed to be. Um, convicting us that that is wrong and also the word of God right here as we read is also saying to us what is wrong Brother Fabian Hi good evening um, yes, please. And good evening to everyone um, you kind of touched on just now on the point I was going to clearly know um, as we're looking at what the situation um, you said what I've talked about those persons who are struggling Right. What about those persons who have relapsed? Can right. they then be redeemed? Say, say again, the last part, can they? Can they be redeemed? Of course they can be redeemed. Of course they can be redeemed. So at which um, point does is it that you will hear you are for sure not entering the kingdom of God? Is it where you uh, you repeatedly relapse? Or perhaps if you or only if let's say you have chosen to ignore his teachings and just do as you see fit. All right. Let me, let me, let me, let me bypass the whole thing about being homosexual. Let's say that I am a, let's say that you have, you have Christians who, who are married and who would have committed adultery. You have persons who are in the church who are not, who are not uh, married as yet, but they're still having sex. Right? Um, if you are in a place where you would have asked God forgiveness and you have gone back, 
whether the adulterer have gone back now living the right way or the person in the church committed fornication have gone back living the right way that is cool there are persons that i have known of or i have heard about ministers as well who would have had relationships with people for three months and six months and that kind of stuff they 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 they, they would have relapsed too whether in adultery or fornication but the fact that you decide that you're going to come out of that and not live there any longer um that is a big difference no i know there's a guy called rare books and rare books is the one who we know from every every sense who sings songs like thank you for giving to the lord and uh one drop of blood a lot of good songs the anchor holes and rare books have gone back now into a place now where he's living homosexual life i don't know if he has changed since the last time we checked him out but if you slip back in that and you are living it that you are constantly living in sin you it, so it's almost that if you, it's almost that you, you, you have gone back into, uh, Peter says, you have returned to your vomit, right? So um, if you are living in sin, it is difficult. You have to be asking God to forgive you every single day and that, and that is not possible. So I think that the Christian has to understand that if he falls down, get back up and, and, and get back in the race. But if it's a case now where you have gone back totally, and you are not returning, then you are in your sin. And sin is basically what keeps us out of, of the kingdom of God and what keeps us out basically of, 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 of heaven. I know that, 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 that help you, brother? It does, because I mean, that is exactly what I was going to say, because if you can't say for, if there was a difference for homosexuality, would then apply to all other sins that you just alluded to yes please yes please yes please so even though we are, fo we are focusing on homosexuality yes but homosexuality is just one of the sins right so again we, we cannot isolate this and treat it so far different from other sins where we are saying that this is the worst 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 one if you practice the other ones you're still good that's not the biblical view because as, as we see here the biblical view here is that Fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, homosexuals, sodomite, thieves, covetous, drunkards, revilers, extortioners will not inherit the kingdom of God, right? Right? So that is the that's the thing. Look at Reverend Reed? Yes, please. Yes, and I think I think it's important um, whenever the church is dealing with whether it be homosexuality or any other. Um, sin that has become prevalent within a group or within the society, it is important for the church to take into consideration. Because, you see, if we just, in dealing with this, this matter, mm -hmm. it is important. I, I believe the argument or the, the, the argument of the church putting forward um, why it is what it is we must we must always preface our move to dealing with this matter with that very important scripture you just made reference to because mm. sometimes sometimes the church can appear to be just zero zeroing in on one sin, this particular sin of homosexuality is the worst thing, Sodom and Gomorrah, and mm -hmm. so on. But I think it is important. It is important for us to, again, make the case that there are other sins, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think our, our argument, um, to me, is more effective. We, we, in other words, we don't give the homosexual or the murderer, if it is murder, whatever it is, we don't give the person guilty of the particular sin that we are seeking to deal with, the opportunity to say, well, why are you all picking on this one? Mm. What about, what about the, the, the adulterers? What about the, the fornicators? What about this body and the next body or the, this sin and the next sin? So I think, I think that's very important um, for us to, a very important case for us to make. The other thing is, um, you spoke to it very well in answering um, 
the brother from Salters. Um, right. Right. Um, first John, first John chapter, chapter three mm -hmm. and, and verse nine. Mm -hmm. No one who is born of God will continue to sin. Correct. B right. Um, Correct. The, the King James Version says, no one who is born of God practices or practices sin mm -hmm. because he's born of God. And because he's born of God, he cannot sin, right? That's King James, because right. his seed remaineth in him. But the point Correct. there is, the point there is not the person who falls, mm. right? Because again, though a righteous man falls, scripture, the right. righteous man falls seven mm -hmm. times, yet shall he do what? Yes, please. Yet shall he rise again and so on. So, yes, um, practicing sin. Mm -hmm. And this is why I have a little difficulty too with when, when we say we are sinners, we are sinners mm -hmm. saved by grace. We are not. <laughs> Right. Yes. Um, yeah. So I just wanted to add that to what you have, what you have shared in answering um, the brother's question. Yes, please. Thanks, Pastor. I see Christine. As well as her hands raised. Christine, are you there? Yep. Right. Yes, Pastor. Brother, see you. I'm, I'm using a, another device tonight. Already, already, brother Sam, come in. Yeah. Um, my question is this. Very mm -hmm. often we as believers find it hard to take a hard line against homosexuals, especially when we are dealing with them directly as individuals. We often find ourselves saying something like, we are not against them as individuals, but against their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. oh, how difficult do you as a believer find it to separate the lifestyle of the homosexual from the person himself? Right. Now, that's a good question. And that's something that we were taught as well. We were taught to always separate a person from their sin. Now, my, my mother, as I was, as I was saying um, a while ago, I would always say when I was younger, I hate this body or I hate that body. And my mother would always say to me, but now you don't hate people, you hate their ways. So she was teaching me from a little boy that, and then I was taught that as well, that we must learn to separate people from their sins. Now, and that's exactly what Christ came to do, because the fact that I am here teaching this evening is, 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 a, is, is the fact that, that, that God separated me from my sin. So he, he saw Wendell in his sin, and he took my sin and saved me. So again, we have to see the homosexual and any other person that same way. Um, that person is living a bad lifestyle, but if we don't separate them from their sin, we're going to treat them as somebody that is like, 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 like salvation is not something that can reach them, right? So I think the view it would be that we should be able to just um, see a person and see that God can do something with this person and not think that this person basically is, you know what I mean, beyond. Because if you take a person just as a homosexual, um, like that all together and don't separate him from, from his ways, I think it, 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 it may be a hopeless case. It may be a case where you think the person maybe cannot be saved or, or would it change. But if you see some person different, um, um, like how Simon, Simon basically would have, would have been one that was bewitching the people in the book of Acts, and then he got saved, the Bible declares, but he still have some ways that were strange, but we still see that he was baptized and he got saved as well. So I think separating is a good thing to do because I think that Christ did that for, 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 for all of us. As we said, we sing the song, he looked beyond my faults and, and, and saw my need. Um. I take your point. It's at the same time, I'm, I'm saying that in the Gomorrah, Solomon Gomorrah incident, mm -hmm. that separation was really made, that they were all destroyed. Yeah, yeah, they, they were destroyed because, again, of, of there was a man called, a man called um, Abraham. Abraham was talking to these, 
to God, um, and he was interceding on 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 the behalf of Sodom. He was thinking about his 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 nephew and his whole soul, and he was beating down God from fifty right, right down. He says, I think not a ten thing it is. And God said, if ten persons there basically will not destroy, and God cannot find ten righteous persons, you know. And if that is the case, if God is asking persons to 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 repent and to change their ways, as a matter of fact, Lot 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 was a preacher down there, you know, according to 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 Peter. Peter says that the deeds that were done um, in in Sodom vexed Lot righteous soul, and he was also a preacher of righteousness. So again, um, Lot could be down there warning people as well too. So I'm saying after we are warned and after we are warned and we don't take heed, then judgment will come. So it's the same thing like, like, like in the days of Noah and also and, and similar to what happened in the book of, of Romans when, when they did not want to retain God in their knowledge, um, God gave them over. So if, 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 there's, if there come a point in time where we are talking to people and speaking to people about their ways and they don't change, then basically they're going to endure I have to enjoy the punishment that God was sent to them. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome, brother. Brother Randall, Pastor John here. Yes, please, brother. <laughs> um, brother Seal, one of the things that we must keep in mind always as Christians is that all men are created in the image of God. Mm -hmm. Every one of us. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter how very our sin is, salvation is offered to all of us because of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So that we need to be mindful of that. What Christ, what Christ has done is he's given salvation for all. Redemption mm -hmm. is possible for every single person. And that is at the expense of Jesus Christ, not at the expense of the church or not at the expense of John Karen or anybody else. That was at the expense of God himself. God is the person who said that the soul that sins shall surely die. That's the same God that said that he came to save mankind. You need two different persons. And, and, and man being created in the image of God, God himself seeks to redeem man. Not men seeking to redeem men. God himself is seeking to redeem man. That is God's purpose. To bring all mankind back to himself. The word of God teaches us that it is not his will that any shall perish, but we all should come to repentance. So whenever we look at another person let us be mindful that there goes me except for the mercies of God. Mm. Let us be mindful that the same God, the same love that God has for me, he has for them. There are no two standards of love in God. It's just one standard. Mm. And that one standard applies to God, Son, and all that God has in creation. God gives that love to every single person. Let us be stored upon all of God's creation. And so we need to be mindful when when people take lifestyles, people have habits, people have infirmities, for lack mm -hmm. of a better word, mm -hmm. that are challenges for them. Christ, Christ is the person who stood on the middle cross. Mm -hmm. All of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah? And so let us be mindful that we need to reach them or reach out to them at least. As you rightly said, if they if they refuse our love and our encouragement, if they refuse our compelling argument of the gospel, well, the blood is on their heads. Correct. But we would have done our part um, in working with the master to seeking to redeem all men. It doesn't, it doesn't matter um what sin or sins call all of us, we're sinners. Mm -hmm. Um, what sin that person has partaken has partaken of the truth is that God wants them to spend eternity with him despite how very vile we might think they are because the truth be known we too are vile we too are vile and, right. and, and we too still have challenges yes yeah and yes. so we, we, we need to be mindful and we need to be thoughtful enough to know that the mercies that are extended that are new every morning is extended to every part of God's creation, not just some of us. Yes. And so we can, although we don't condone a person's lifestyle, we still gotta love that person 
the same way God loves us. Mm -hmm. And I think I think that is something that we need to be very mindful of is that that person, however vile we may think they are, is loved of God, and hence are also to be loved by us. Yes, please. And what he thinks to um Pastor Carrington as well. You know, I, I, I love Jesus, right? Because Jesus went count to count with the culture. And, 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 and Christ never allowed the pressure from the culture to, to determine how he functioned. Now, the, the, the lady at the well is a is case in point for me. I love that one because Christ went to a woman and even the disciples were kind of wondering why he would have spoken to a woman. And, and, and Christ went there for her knowing the kind of condition that she was in. She had five husbands, the, the, uh, Christ told her. But, 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 but Christ, again, was, 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 was thinking about the soul of this woman. So we have to look beyond people's, um, and the, the culture that we are in um, would be like telling us, you know, man, bond them out or, you know what I mean, whatever negative thing to do with them. But then we have to understand that Christ dealt with some people, a woman that was um, caught in adultery, and the same lady here with the with the uh, at the well, and Christ basically dealt with them differently to how the culture would have wanted to deal with it. So again, we have a way of dealing with it, and it cannot be how to put it. We we cannot deal with the people the way how our culture will deal with them or want us to deal with them. We have to deal with it the biblical way, and love has to be the reason how why we deal with people now or how we deal with people. So my 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 motto for for life is to love God and love others. And there's nothing else to do but to do those two things. And if you can love God and love others, I believe many persons will, will come to know Jesus as well to the way how we treat them. We're not entertaining or, or we're not in any way condoning their lifestyle, but love has to be there for real at all times. I see Jay has her hand raised. Brother Weeks, I want to come in here after that person too. Yes, please. Yes, please. Yes. Hi, good night, Pastor Weeks. Yes, please. How are you doing? I'm good. Thanks. You? Good as well. Okay. Um, I wanted to know what you think about persons who are intersex, like um, born hermaphrodites, as we want to call them. Right. So, so it was, right. So they have both male and female sex organs. Right. So suppose um, when they were younger, they wanted to, they chose to be male. Right. So they had girlfriends and so on. And outwardly, they look like a male. Right. When they got older, they realized that they feel more like a female. Right. They started to be attracted <laughs> towards males. Yeah. Even though on the outside, they look like a man. Right. What would you say about that? But that's that's a that's a very special case because the fact that you have both and uh, not one, that 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 alone could be confusing. I think I remember we had a case like that in Barbados a couple of years ago where there was some guy, well, I can't say guy. There was a child, and I think he had the same thing as well. I say he again, but um, and. They don't know whether to sit down to urinate or to stand up. And then I think that's a very difficult thing for parents as well, too, because imagine you have a child like that and you don't know which one to 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 because it uh, which one to to, to, to choose. Uh, Pastor Jackman would have mentioned one really here on Sunday at Chapman Street where he was saying that they were. Two, they were, they were, well, not, not mentioned one, it's, it's similar, but he was talking about a twin, and one of them had an operation that kind of um, caused a lot of damage to his penis, and then they had to, they, they actually, the parents decided that they would make him a girl or whatever, and then when he got older, um, as you were saying, oh, he realized that he feeling strange in his body, and basically that he likes um, girls. So in this case, now where you have a person that has both genitals, boy, that is a very difficult one. And that is one now that, in my estimation, that is hard to deal with. I don't know how to answer that. Um, the only way that I could, the only way that I could answer this from my, my, my wisdom 
is that I will let that person remain with the tool until they they get to a stage past purity or wherever where they say, well, all right, I feel I'm more a man now or more of a woman now or whatever, and then they can make the choice. But that's a difficult one. That's a that's one of those balls that I don't know. That's one of those balls that are very difficult. You know what I mean? But that one has to be dealt with. That, that's a good that, that's a good answer that you gave, Vendel. Okay. That, that's a good that's a good oh. answer you gave because uh, oh the other person is speaking. Also, no, I was asking like, would they have uh, would you accept quote uncle accept them into the church and let them like leave service or like take an active role in church? Seeing that like the person would be considered to be liking the same sex. <laughs> But but again, <laughs> but when I want to yes, help you out here. Go, go, I, go on. No, no, no. I, I think the, the, the answer you give is a very appropriate one because that's a decision that some of the, the medical professionals make in that situation. Right. All right, because there, there is more to maleness and femaleness than just the genitalia. Right. So you're talking about here the genitalia where the, the person has the organ of, of a male and a female, mm -hmm. but there are still internal things that determine maleness or femaleness because you, you're dealing with ovaries for a woman, you're dealing with a prostate for a male, you're dealing right. with testicles for a male, you're dealing with the differences in, in, the, in the heart and differences in the, in the, the bone structure, mm -hmm. um, the differences in the brain. So, so, so you, can, you can wait and you will be able to define further down the road, especially when puberty starts to kick in you get more definition as to where what we would call the orientation would go. Right. And then based on that, the doctor is determining what type of surgery they will perform, whether to allow the male organ to remain or mm -hmm. allow the, the male organ to remain based on what is coming out more in the character of the person. Now, the question the young lady was asking, now, if that person makes a decision to follow Christ in their physical state, which they will have no control over, Right. All right. You, you right. They will have no control over that because they didn't they didn't make themselves, they didn't create themselves, and they'll be wrestling with something that they will have no control over. But they will right. come to a point where that individual will have to make a choice, mm -hmm. and they will be given guidance based on the people who will be professionals. When you make that choice, then you have to operate within that framework, and then right. you accept the person based on on the decision that they make. If they want to follow Christ, then they will be following basically where the, 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 they'll be directed to follow based on the operation that will have taken place. In the case that you mentioned, that you mentioned it last time, when, when that young boy began to mature, even though they gave him a female organ, mm -hmm. he, he recognized he was a male because the right. male character then started to come true and he reverted back to, to, the, to the original sex that he was designed by God to have, right? Mm -hmm. So that is how you would have to approach that. Now, right. The, what I wanted to mention be, before is that Patrick had mentioned, yes, we got to make the point that there, there, there are all types of sins and we don't want to make the homosexual believe that we are picking on them and that we are trying to emphasize that particular um, sin. But what we also must look at is that we are living in a culture now where people, even within the church, um, Reverend Weeks, mm -hmm. they are making it seem to be all right. Nobody makes a thief, all right? We don't, we don't compromise with a person who's a thief or a person who's an adulterer or a person mm -hmm. who's a murderer or a person who's an extortioner. We, we don't right. compromise with those. We condemn them. But mm -hmm. we are living in a world now where people are compromising with homosexuality, even in the church. Mm -hmm. And we have, we have people who identify as, as homosexual apologists who are looking at the very foundation that you laid, which I must commend you, is an excellent foundation and it's an absolute foundation coming from the scripture and what they're arguing, these, these homosexual uh, activists who, who are in the church, but they're defending homosexuality because they are, they are engaged in the lifestyle. What they're saying is that the, the, the Jews and the first century church did not have a proper understanding of what homosexual, homosexuality was all about. And they were writing it based on the fact and they saw homosexuality as a vile thing, which, you know, people were engaging, as you mentioned, with the rape and whatnot. But in our culture now, we have homosexuals who are committed, who love each other, who want to get married, 
and that the first century church didn't understand that. But that is not true because yeah. if, if to say that, it say Jesus didn't understand it because Jesus, when, when you made mention in Matthew chapter 19, when he said, but male and female, Correct. that God created from the beginning, but Jesus yeah. would, 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 would know what, what we would be talking about in this day and age. And, and there's no part of the Bible where you would ever see um, the word of God actually accepting homosexuality as a, as a lifestyle that people could follow. There's no part that, that affirms it. No that, part in the Bible that affirms it. So if it, if it was a good type of relationship, Jesus would have, would have affirmed that it is all right. Hmm. But that is not the case. So that's what we have to be dealing with. Our judgment begins in the house of God. And if we right. can't get people to see that homosexuality is wrong inside the church, then you're going to got problems on the outside. And therefore, right. we have to try to, to turn what the church is, is allowing to be superimposed on them, of accepting the culture of the world and defending it when we don't have any basis for at all. And you, you well lay that out. And the Bible is a heterosexual book and it condemns homosexuality. And we have to condemn it because people are tolerating it now. And we are trying to let people know if you practice that lifestyle, you're alienating yourself from the kingdom of God. It's correct. It's correct. And and, and truth is too that when, when, when we practice, or uh, if somebody practices a Christian or whoever practices uh, homosexuality, what they're doing too is that they are stopping Jesus from really forming himself in them. Because when when a man goes now to the effeminate side, basically he he he's losing basically what God has created him to be. And then and then when you have a woman now that has gone over now from from her feminine side to a masculine side, she's also um, losing what God is in her to be as well. So you, you 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 will lose when you are living this this way of life because again. I, I can't see it nowhere in the Bible. I mean, there's so many things in the Bible that I could have brought as well tonight, but um, some of them look at, at um, male male um, prostitutes, if you want to put it that way. But I was looking merely at the foundation that is set, the biblical model that we see. I cannot see, as you said, there's no pastor, nowhere in the Bible where God supports that. So I, I have a difficulty right. now, how can somebody in the church or even a pastor support it. And then the mad thing that I have too in my head is a pastor is homosexual. We know he's going home to a man, or we know that she's going home to a woman, and we come and sit down under that person to hear the word of God. I don't understand that. Yeah. I, I cannot get that understood, understood at all because again, the, 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 the problem that we have is that we don't like the word. We, we, we move with feelings and the culture of the day. And, and Correct. The warns us about that the bible says do not be conformed to this world in the world and and the, the word is what we have to find even even if, if even if i feel in myself well well i have this problem i have to come and line up myself with the word right that's right and and and, and the word no i find in this particular context this kind of time that we live in you know the word doesn't seem to carry a lot of weight as when, as when I was coming up as a Christian, I find that the Christians now are more siding with the culture and not with the word because you can't look in the Bible. I don't understand you look in the Bible and see something as clear as day. Yeah, very clear. And still reject it and say, I can live this life and God loves me the way how I am. I, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. But again, we have a challenge. It's a real, it's a real serious challenge. Actually, today, I saw there is a gear is a what a um a gay church there's a there's, there's they, i mean they and they are bold to say that they are gay they are practicing church. I heard, yeah yeah i heard a pastor, a pastor told me that one, one of the leaders of his group basically is a gay pastor and he's married you know personally i cannot sit down under that pastor I cannot sit down. I cannot sit down under nobody that is a gay, a gay, a gay anything teaching me the word of God. I cannot do that because again, I, I you are a vessel that is not fit um, for 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 ministry. Um, we don't hear you, but you're not ready for ministry. So we have to look at this, and it's a very 
You know, many people think that we are homophobic and stuff because we um, speak like this and we are not homophobic. We are basically, let's say what the word of God uh, basically is, 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 is saying. I see sister, we, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yes, go ahead. I said we are speaking the truth in love. Correct, correct, correct. And we can't back up on the truth because the truth is what brings deliverance, man. And set you free. So, Sister Sister Jacqueline Harper, see your hand raised as well. Hello, good night to everybody. Yes, please, Jackie. How are you doing? I am well, thank you. What about you? Good as well. Good as well. Okay, good. I've been listening attentive, attentively because you know that, that this topic is one of my a topic that I'm very passionate about. Yes, please. But one of the things that came into my mind, to my mind just you now when you were talking about um, about the um back in the church of Corinthian where you were talking about uh, people can change and we all know that people can change, right? Yes, please. But my question is, I am a woman mm -hmm. and suppose I had found myself in a relationship with a man, mm -hmm. not knowing that this man was a homosexual, mm -hmm. but for some reason later down, into relationship, we, we ain't married as yet, but mm -hmm. somewhere later down into relationship, for some reason he decided to come clean mm -hmm. or somebody, as we know that we have a lot of malicious people I should say around, mm -hmm. might see me out and about with this guy and decide to say, to, um, let me know that he was a homosexual or something to that, you know. Right. And, you know, as the human instinct, we all react to things right. and we all react differently. Mm -hmm. But I approached him and I confronted him about the whole thing. And he says to me, yes, that was the kind of lifestyle I was living. Right. But I've now crossed over from that. Mm -hmm. But I know as the Indian, as the woman decide that, you know what? I don't want him in the part of it and this because all I could think going through my, my mind is that this person was a gay person mm -hmm. having sexual intercourse with a man. Mm -hmm. And you know how we, we <laughs> minds this thing. Okay. I don't hate him mm -hmm. because at some point in time, I would have been saying to this person, I love you or whatever. I don't hate him. Right. But I decided at this point in time, this relationship ain't going any further because of the lifestyle that you live. Right. You know? Right. And I decide to break it off with the person. Mm -hmm. What does that make me? A demon? A wicked person? What does that make me? No, nah, it doesn't make you a demon at all, a wicked, because the truth is you have to know what you can what, what you can live with. Right? Um, there, um, I, I know of a couple who who basically are similar to you, um, but it, it, it's similar in the sense that they were homosexuals and they, they knew that, but your case is different. They, you, you didn't know. And, and if you know that you can't handle that, um, personally, I would advise you to move on for real. Um, if it's something that, that you think that the person reassures you that they have never gone that way or they don't have that feeling anymore and maybe it's through counseling or whatever, you can, can get some advice that would make you see it clearer or better. That is another option. But the truth is, <laughs> the Bible declares that what is not faith is sin. So if you are going into something and you're not confident about it in yourself, you are sinning against your own self, right? And I think there's another scripture that says, happy is the man who does not condemn himself in what he allows. So if you are going to allow something, but yet still every time you go to work, you have you have these thoughts in your head that they make the right decision and that is always nagging you all the time, then I would advise you not to do it, right? So you don't, you're not a demon at all if you think it that way. <laughs> okay, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, that's the right answer. It's, it's a matter of choice and what you are yeah. comfortable with. I agree. Yes, please. Yes, please. Brother Seal, you're here again? Brother Seal? Yes. Yes, please. Um, before I begin, just let me thank um, Pastor Carrington for his intervention and we questioned earlier. Mm -hmm. um, 
a number of people who have homosexual tendencies will say to you that it's based on some hormonal imbalance. Right. I think when they say that they're somehow blaming God more or less. Mm -hmm. how, how, how do you feel about that? What was your response to that? Well, hormonal imbalance is different to, to, to what people want to put it to genes because I believe we live in a fallen world and the truth is they got some men that lack testosterone and they may have more estrogen in, in, in them than, than testosterone. And then you have you, you see them, like, they have, even though they're males, they look like maybe hard breasts. Yeah, they look like they have breasts and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And if you have a, a hormone yeah. imbalance, you you can, sorry, if you have a hormone imbalance, you can get testosterone to actually top up what you are lacking. Um, so I don't see nothing wrong with that, right? Because I know that there's some persons who, who have less um, the estrogen, and more testosterone and vice versa. So I mean, I mean, even as we grow older too, um, even as we grow older, the more I go to get my checkups, I realize too that men as they age, the testosterone levels um, get low as well too. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's good for a man to do some, to, to do like, to, to push weights or do some pushes or whatever. And that will keep that as well too. And there are foods that you can use. So there, there, there are hormone imbalances as well. And believe it or not, hormones basically tell your body how to behave and how to function and how to feel. So if your hormone is out of whack, then you'll be out of whack as well too. You will be feeling a way that you shouldn't feel. I remember there's a guy, and it wasn't, it wasn't even hormones. It was a guy that had a problem for years. I know two guys. One is, my, one is my cousin. He had a problem for years. And he is a vegan, live raster life. And he had a problem for years. And what happened to him is the doctors told him that he needed to eat some fish. And believe it or not, he started to eat fish and his problem changed. There's another the guy who had a problem for a lot of years. And I remember seeing him in town. And he said, Wendell, I found out what the problem was, you know. The problem was that I cannot handle milk. Lactose intolerant. And for the thing that he stopped using milk or he had, had milk for everything, morning and evening that solve his problem so we have we have people um who have lacks in certain vitamins or minerals or whatever and if they get them then they're up to par so i i think that the the hormone thing can play a part but the other one that that people are arguing um is the whole thing of genes that it is there that is in their gene pool or whatever and and there's no research to, to, to prove that, but people argue that as well. But as far as the hormone is concerned, I think that you can have some imbalances and stuff that, that can rectify the fetus state, the testosterone or the, or the, or the estrogen. I, just to further that question, I, my more direct question is to ask really if because of the, the hormonal imbalance, mm -hmm. that lifestyle should be more accepted. Ah. Uh more accepted i understand what you're saying i i i must i i more accepted i i would say i would say what's the word i want for you window i i can i can i can empathize with some person excuse me if that's the case we don't want to accept the, the, the lifestyle, but we can understand and empathize um, basically because of the of the of the imbalance. Excuse me. And I I I would have known some persons, some men who would have had that as well, too. Had that imbalance for real, who had to take um testosterone to get themselves back up. Because man, we live in a I said we're in a fallen world and anything like this can happen. So um that's why that, that that's why about the seal. I, I think that I think we should understand people before we throw rocks. You know what I mean? I, I think there should be a, a, a time where we sit down and talk to people and ask a question like why you behaving like this or where you feel that you are a girl or where you feel that you are a man, ever you are a woman or whatever, and have some kind of thing and, and get to the root of it, you know what I mean? Because sometimes I, I believe that. 
if we can understand the reason why somebody is doing this, and uh, then we can treat them better. Treat them better in the sense of um, if there are any medical things that they need to get, uh, prayer ways or whatever. Um, because they got some people that I think that need deliverance as well too. Because we have heard about many homosexual persons. Um, we would have seen one, a very pretty young girl who lived as a male for many years. And she said that one of her friends invited her to church. And when she went to church, basically, she realized um, she, she, she got saved and everything. I know she, she looks like a girl. They have pictures with her looking like a man and stuff. Because sometimes the, the absence of light causes darkness to flourish, you know. And, and sometimes when people are out of the, in the dark, meaning away from church, away from the word, um, no light is spotted on them. So therefore, they just allow that life to flourish. But when light comes, then darkness has to flee. So there are persons who may need an encounter with God. And even after they get encounter with God, they may also need some deliverance as well too. Um, so a lot, that, that, that's a lot of question, brother. And it, it is one of those things I, I believe that we need to see um, how we handle people and not that because we see them a particular way, don't treat all them the same way because I think the individual thing like Christ did, did really, really add well with the woman called adultery, this individual one-on-one, -on -one, I think that can give us some more clarity as to what the person is behaving like that and, and then we'll be able to minister better. Hello, I'd like to come on top in here. Um, yes, sir, yes, I, I, I love the questions you asked. Um, I want to say that the hormone imbalance is only but one factor. Because in a male low testosterone can give you things like ED, um, irregular heartbeat, and that kind of stuff. If Dr. Rene is here, she, she would probably give you a better understanding. Mm -hmm. Without any feminine How to put it? But, 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 but those kind of sexual feelings towards the same sex. All right. To me, it runs. Yes, the hormone imbalance could be a factor, mm -hmm. but to me, a lot of homosexuality is behavior. Yeah. Which is just which is more than testosterone. Um, the lack of testosterone. Right. Um, or any hormone imbalance. It's far more than that, mm -hmm. and a lot of it has to do with. How should I put it? Deep seated wrongs or deep seated things that have happened and responses that were made to them were incorrect, mm -hmm. for lack of a better word. And hence, or for instance, a, a child, a child grows, a, a young boy grows up, and he's, for lack of a better word, he's soft. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then people begin to treat him in a certain way. Mm -hmm. All right. And he learns and appreciates that behavior towards him. And then he also learns that that behavior leads in a, along a certain path. Those people have an expectation of it that he then learns to follow. The nurture, yeah. Yeah, they nurture that expectation in him. Mm -hmm. And so that he begins to do things to seek the approval of those people who encourage. Right. Um, so some person once said that they never understood how it is that with a homosexual men would be oh, hostile towards him, but women would encourage him. Yeah, it's true. They never, they never understood. They, ne they never understood why that was so. Mm -hmm. And and I and I, I I often say that there are things that we don't know that we can't explain mm -hmm. because as for me they're above my pay grade. But one of the things that I do I do understand is that a lot of nurturing behavior mm -hmm. determines traits that should have been corrected, allowing them to follow a, what we call a, a natural path mm -hmm. so they become a norm for the person who have been nurtured. Yes, please. And so that a lot, a lot of it is, well, not a lot, but to the point is that it isn't just the lack of estrogen in a female that she wants to be a man or to test her on in a man that he wants to be a woman. A lot mm -hmm. is behavior that has been um, nurtured, incorrect behavior that has been nurtured, and by the person who deserves that nurturing that has been fostered, and they, they've been allowed to think this is how you're supposed to be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Rather than person saying this is not how males are, or this is not how 
females are and begin to show the person, not try to beat it down their throats, mm -hmm. but by lovingly showing them this is how it is done. There's a better way of this, there's a better outcome for this, mm -hmm. for you. And, yeah. and, and hence, not, I'm not trying to break the child's spirit either to get it done, mm -hmm. but to use what the child presents and, and to nurture that child in a particular path that helps that child to come to, uh, to maturity, recognizing that you were created in the image of God and you're created to particular sex. Because a lot of people force this idea that, this, this idea that transgenderism, and, and I've asked, the day that you can pull up a different X, where you are X, X, let me know. Because I only know about two, <laughs> two sets of chromosomes. They don't know about the third. They've never seen the third. Scientists mm -hmm. have never seen the third. And if they have, they read it from us all the time. This whole thing about transgenderism and homosexuality, a lot of it is behavior. A lot of it is societal behavior. People who have been, as you just said, Jackson, people who have not been nurtured by the word of God, people who have not been instructed by the word of God, people who forget that there is a God and mm -hmm. forget that that God has a reason for them being there, people who have forgotten that there's a path that God expects us to follow. Mm -hmm. The Bible said they've forgotten God and it's only, so God has given them up. Yeah. And, and, and this, is not only, this is not only to the adults because what is given up, when the adults are given up, what happens to the children? Mm -hmm. Because these same very children are being nurtured by these same adults that have been given up. And often, these children come along accepting what these adults have nurtured as mm -hmm. being normal. Right. To their own, to their own detriment. Then, then you come into an age where they, where they begin to recognize that, hey, something is wrong with this. Mm -hmm. But no, they're totally confused. If, if they were confused before, they're even more confused now. And to me, that's a lot of the challenge with homosexuality and transgenderism. There's a whole lot of confusion. Mm -hmm. And especially in the early times of the child, that, 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 those early years of a child's life, because the adults in that child's life, the, 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 the environment in which that child has been reared, has accommodated what they think it should be, rather mm -hmm. than looking at what God has given them and try to nurse, nurture that child along the path that they can see the anatomical structure to begin with is evidence of what the child should be. If, if you can, if you can, if you can discern nothing else, you can you can discern the anatomical structure. You can see that with your eyes, mm -hmm. and then then you know that there's certain behaviors that are accepted. Now, there are some people who are soft-spoken and passive. Mm -hmm. The other persons who are outspoken, they're extroverted. Um, mm -hmm. but they, they, they got girls that are tomboyish, but that don't mean they're males. That's true. Yeah, and and, and the boys who are soft, but they don't that don't mean that they're female. Sure, and a lot of that, a lot of that nurturing, when it's incorrectly done, mm -hmm. results in a lot of confusion that children grow up with, being yeah. uncertain. Because often the people who are doing the nurturing, they themselves are uncertain. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Pastor. I see, Reverend. I'm sorry. Um, Thank you, Spooner, Brother Spooner. Yes. Good evening. Um, yes, uh, please. Good evening. Yes, please. Um, some some persons are born differently. Um, if you remember, um, the South African athlete Castor Cementa, mm -hmm. she yes, ran please. as a woman in the Olympics. Right. And then then the um, the authorities came to the conclusion that she is more male than female, so she can't run with the females. And as a result of that, her career came to an end. Right. But um, what we're discussing tonight, we're looking at the present and what is happening now. Mm -hmm. But what 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 about the future? What I mean, if 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 this thing alone. To continue. Mm -hmm. What 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 is it saying to us as far as world population is concerned? I mean, a lot, a lot of countries, including Barbados, mm -hmm. are underpopulated. Right. And we know that um, homosexuality. Um, two two males cannot reproduce. Two females right. cannot reproduce. All right. And 
I'm looking, I hate that down the road. Our population might be in trouble. I don't know how, how you see it. Yeah, what yeah, yeah. I, 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 I agree with you. I agree with you. <laughs> I agree with you. And 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 the and the other problem too, um, Brother Spoons, is that I I I I I may be a single man, I, I may see a girl that I like, right? And 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 then another girl may another girl may see that same girl that I like too. So 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 while while I was not supposed to get any kind of um what's the word? I was not supposed to get any kind of competition from 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 the opposite sex, right? I I, I am fighting now really now to get uh, against the opposite sex for this same person that I want. So it is a is a very serious thing. I mean, it is against the plan of of God and it's devilish and it's demonic because again, looking at this, you. God gave us a command to be fruitful and to multiply. And um, men don't have wounds. All right? And two men together, it can't go anywhere. Two women together, you're missing, you're missing the sperm and that kind of stuff, and it can't work. So, so what you're saying is true. If we continue in this vein, then you will not have as much children. And then you may have the crazy thing. You may have the crazy thing where these people are given the opportunity to adopt children. Which is again another another bad example because you're growing up with two fathers or two mothers, you know what I mean. So I understand what you're saying. It is it is problematic for real down the road. Doctor Boyce. Hi. Good night. Yes, um, so, Brother Spooner's question actually touches my presentation next week about the impact of transgenderism on society. Right. Um, but just a few things that Pastor John had mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, there are two sets of, of gametes, I would say, male and female. There is the X chromosome and the Y chromosome. XX would make you female, XY would make you male. But there are some conditions where there is not proper separation of these chromosomes. So people end up being XXY, for example, mm. um, of being either a distinct XX or XY. And right. therefore, they have different characteristics other than physical characteristics that sometimes um, cause them to look different from a, I would say cautiously standard male, standard female. Right. But I really do agree with, with um, much of what he is saying because we always come back to this issue of nature versus nurture. Correct. Because I throw out the suggestion, if we took a sample of homosexual males, how many of them would we find normal testosterone levels in? Mm. Um, and then we have to consider that in many of these persons who are going through transgenderism, they are taking hormones of the opposite sex because um, in order to get those secondary sexual characteristics that define the adult woman and define the adult male, it's the responsibility of these hormones. So persons who, for example, want to become female, a male that wants to become female, will start taking estrogen, the dominant female hormone, and mm -hmm. would start developing um, breast tissue and become less masculine, you know, the broad chest and so on. Right. And surgeries and all these things can happen. So these things are possible, but much of it is societal. Much of it, like Pastor John is saying, um, that there is learned behavior, learned behavior. And we cannot forget the spiritual component either. Right. And then the last point that I will make for tonight, because I can see the hour, is that sometimes it is not easy at birth to determine whether an infant is male or female. There are some instances, mm -hmm. rare though they might be, of being mm -hmm. unable to determine whether an infant is male or female. So we can discuss these things a little more next week, Lord willing. Okay. 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 All right. So I, I give God thanks for you. No, I saw a hand, Minister James. I saw Minister James. And then I see Sandra Paula Bostic. I'm going to give to you the last words. Um, so Minister James, are you still here? 
Yes, sir. Good night to um, you and your panel, sir. What is it? Original, uh, uh, original, original. Gym? Yes, please. Bye. Right, yeah. <laughs> Good to hear you, brother. And you too, sir. Yeah, man. Um, I, I come to I come to start this part a little bit tonight. All right, me hear you. And, and give and give some trouble. I, I I like to I like to get get a little trouble every now and then, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I agree with I agree with pasta, a hundred percent. Right, I I agree with him. Mm -hmm. However, um, I I live in a, I live in a country that th these people are bold, and and this 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 these people this country belongs to them. I I believe honestly. Sometimes I believe the country belongs to them. Mm -hmm. Um, where at, I I agree with him where he says you know you know somebody might might tell he that he's he's gay and so. But the young people, a lot of the young people in this country, they are mm -hmm. bold to tell you that they are homosexual, right? And they 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 hold they hold no qualm, none. Mm -hmm. right. Um, I have I have done some outreach uh, with my with my pastor here. Mm -hmm. And um, I would have been uh, able to talk to some of them, and right. and and they, they 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 tell you straight up they don't want anything to do with God. Mm -hmm. A lot of them, a, a few of them told us, well, their are their 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 father or mother is a pastor, right? And they they don't they want they don't want anything at all to do with God, right? And 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 they they have embraced they have embraced fully. The, the gear the, the gear agenda right right and and i am saying that the, and the only way for these people to 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 change or change their mindset is to mm -hmm. really have a one on one with god right i believe that mm -hmm. uh, and i they, they're not preaching they know it, it just it has to be like for them God has to come down and have a one-on-one -on -one, like the woman at the well hmm. and have a talk with the with me. Hmm. People, you know, they, they 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 don't want anything to do. They they actually there's a preacher, a, a preacher here in Toronto that they ran, they, they, they ran the man off the block and got it and police lock up the man just because he was preaching the gospel. Right. The gay agenda in, in this country has a lot of power. Hmm. And I I honestly believe that Christianity is lacking. And like this, this really, this really no. I mean, me and me and the church can get a little wrong because I can, I can raffle some feathers here now, right? Um, the church has been lacking in the sense that we have we are not going out there. We are standing in our fancy buildings and hollering hallelujah and praise the Lord. And the work of God needs to be done. There are few preachers, there are few pastors, there are few preachers out there that are actually doing what Jesus did when he was on the earth, and that is walk the earth. Hmm. We are more concerned about standing in the building, putting up the best choir, putting up the, the loudest speakers, putting up the, the best sounding people, the best um, usher this and the best usher that, and souls are being lost because you know what the people are telling us up? What, what is Christianity? What, what, have, what have Christians done for me? Hmm. So I, 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 while I agree with you guys, and I, I you know, what I mean, um, the gay agenda has to stop. I, how, how is it going to stop when we are not making ourselves present? Well, as a question to um, um, Rodney, um, yeah, the 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 I, I find that sometimes, right, when you go out as a church and you talk mm -hmm. as a group, mm -hmm. they, they 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 appear as lions. Yeah. Yeah, but, but if you pull these people by themselves, subs, yes, you, yeah, you right? will get, you will get, yeah, you will get, um, you get different response. My life, yeah, I you will get. A I response. saw a man at night, and I witnessed this man, and this man began to cry. Right. Okay. Yeah. And, and the man told me that he raped a girl. He man confessed that he raped a girl. I, mm. I, I actually saw, I actually saw another time. I was witnessing with 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 Pastor Mo. Yeah. And 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 and. I carry home the guy from the village in Greens, right? And yeah. the man told me, boss man, that woman frightened me. Right. You hear what I tell you? Mm -hmm. And she was talking to him, she was talking to him by himself, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. I find that when you, a lot of them got a lot of mouth by themselves, but you see the gospel, 
the gospel is the power random. of salvation. And you, they were you, random. You, 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 you'll be amazed that when you speak the word, it pierces them. They, 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 they appear like that. But I know that they got strategies. And sometimes the best may not be in a crowd. But if you can pull down one, say, or in, on an individual basis, man, you can get the season results for real. But Pastor, I, I hear you, but we still got to get there. We got I to agree, get there. I agree, I agree, I agree, I agree. We got to start. It's time for the church to get out the walls now. We we are getting fat Christian, fat. We getting all the word, and the world is and the world the world getting small, small, small because we ain't feeding them. Well, I I cannot. They I cannot fat disagree with, I cannot with that. I know for sure you are going for more for sure. We for got sure. to go and move. Yeah, that's what Jesus did. Yes, please. I agree, brother. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Thank you as well too. Well, we have five more minutes. Uh, basically, um, our sister, um, Bostic, are you still here? Hey, yeah, good night. Can you hear yes, me, please. Reverend? Yeah. Yes, please. Good night, and good night to everybody on the platform. Yes, um, what I wanted to mention, I guess, at this juncture is, I, I think, obviously, we're going to, we have a, a long battle and fight on our hands vis-a-vis -vis homosexuality and transgenderism, et cetera. And I think I'm seeing it a lot more as I drive across the island, living in St. Philip and working as far down the West Coast as St. Lucy as well. Mm. Daily, I pass the roads and you see, like, I guess when I was growing up and I'm in my 50s, boys look like boys and girls look like girls. Right. And as you're driving, going along, now that the, I guess, the Ministry of Education has relaxed the rules or changed the rules or whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. and we're now allowing, and, I, and my wish is not to offend anybody, but we have boys that wear hairstyles that you would normally associate with girls. So right. a lot of, and I'm not talking about um, Rastafarian children, right. because even a Rastafarian boy looks like a boy and a Rastafarian girl looks like a girl. Right. I'm talking about boys that wearing plaques like girls and sometimes I do a double tape because I don't know if the person I'm looking at is really a boy or a girl. We now have a lot of androgynous looking people walking around on this island, in this island. Right. And we're encouraging it in schools by allowing boys to wear hairstyles that would have traditionally been associated with girls. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'm seeing boys with braids like added on braids and beads and they're here and, and they're going to school. Right. Um, and so I think in a lot of ways, our males are becoming, I guess, they're no longer masculine. I think the word is mm -hmm. emasculating them. And I think that as a real threat because when a man is no longer a man, a boy is no longer a boy and men are supposed to be our leaders, et cetera. You know, you can see the whole downward spiral. And I guess the more you can attack the males and the more you can convince males that they're not males and they're whatever else, but they're not males. You know, that's that's where the whole thing just slides and gives away. And I think right. our education system now, so therefore by extension, our, our government is headlong permitting it or being forced into it by external sources. I don't know, Finally. but... I think we definitely have a fight in our hands because we're males are no longer even physically looking like males anymore. And what's worse, they, they don't see anything wrong with it. Right, 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 right. So that's the, that's the difficulty that we have. And I think because people now are what they call, they're, they're, they're bold and they are choosing the side that they want to be on and they're not afraid to, to, to look a particular way. In our times, we basically, um, we knew persons who were gay and they may not have been even in any women's clothes. We knew them, who we knew who they were. And we, we only knew who they were, but we have never really seen them, you know what I mean? Some of them have talked that way or wherever, but they were not as bold as what we see now. So, but that's why this is called the agenda because um, people are selecting all the different stars and the different um, persons that they see um, in, the, in the world, celebrities who are gay and promoting them and the way how they live and stuff. And that is the way 
to encourage other persons to come out and to be strong and to be bold in their, in their way. Um, but the thing about it is, the Christian has to live their state, though. Um, I, I think when it comes to the church, I think the church is supposed to be a place that knows the truth and supports the truth. And we have to live the state that we know because we have to re reproduce after our kind. And our kind is the godly kind. We're not the homosexual kind, right? If, if there's any Christian that is the homosexual, that is homosexual, something is wrong with that because that is not, that is not a biblical construct at all. That is basically something that the devil can call basically. But we have to be very mindful um, of the word and live by the word. I would encourage all of the saints to be in your word on a regular basis because if you're not in the word, something else is shaping your life. And that's the problem that we have. Um, we are thinking now about um, how we feel. I don't see nothing wrong with, I don't see nothing wrong with, but the, the thing is, what does the Bible say about this particular issue? And uh, we have to, to keep on fighting um, and keep the church pure. So people, um, thanks for coming out tonight. Um, I, I really appreciate this. Um, I know sometimes too that the, the timing may be a little issue um, because um, there's only so much you can do within an hour and a half or whatever, but we have gone to two hours already. But, but I, I give God thanks for what we have accomplished tonight. And I really pray that what would have shared, what you would have shared um, in the study and even the different comments and different views that you would have heard tonight would have made an impact and that we would have something better um, to how to navigate this, this, this whole, this whole yeah, agenda and stuff. So God bless you all people. And we're looking forward to hearing um, our next session next week, God willing. And we have these for the whole month. And we looking forward for more persons to be there too um, in our sessions um, on Sunday where we met. We could have had far more people than what than who were there at Chapman Street. So we're looking forward to that when we meet on 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 the last time, the last Sunday, the last Sunday thing it would be that we have more persons in person as well. So God bless you all, people, and thanks for coming out and have a wonderful night. We will see you next week, God willing.